Hi there and welcome to another video in the Walking to Fitness series. This video focuses on the technique of stride walking. It has been developed by Fitwalk Ireland and kindly supported by Roscommon Sports Partnership. There are three parts to this video as follows. Firstly, we propose our format for a fitness walk. Then we highlight the key guideline in relation to aerobic activity and outline practical ways in which you can increase the intensity of your walking to an aerobic level. And finally, we offer practical tips and advice in relation to the technique of stride walking that you can incorporate into your walking program. We suggest a fitness walk is a structured session which comprises a warm-up phase, a workout phase during which some of the walking should be at an aerobic level, and finally a warm-down phase. And while this video deals with how stride walking can help in the workout phase, other videos in the Walking to Fitness series deal with elements such as warming up, warming down, etc. A current health enhancing physical activity guideline suggests that all adults should accumulate at least 30 minutes of aerobic activity on most days of the week. And so we suggest that during the workout phase of a walk we should raise the level of intensity of our walking to an aerobic level and thereby accumulate some or all of the 30 minute target. To raise our walking to an aerobic level, we need to increase the intensity from the normal low intensity that we walk at to an intensity that is often described as moderate. At this level, our body gives us three key clues. Firstly, our heart beats faster. Secondly, our breathing becomes faster and deeper, but we should not be out of breath. And thirdly, our temperature rises to the point where we might perspire lightly, but not profusely. So while normal walking can be described as comfortable for us, aerobic walking can be described as slightly uncomfortable, but not uncomfortable. So here are some practical ways to raise the intensity of our walking from low to aerobic. Increasing the pace is one option, but this may not suit people with balance concerns or indeed people with joint problems where the higher impact presents challenges. Incorporating inclines like hills or steps into our walks is another very good option in increasing intensity. More and more people have begun to use poles to increase the intensity of their walking. This is because the addition of either Nordic poles or activator poles substantially increases the amount of work being done by the upper body while walking. And finally, another way to increase intensity is to change from our normal, comfortable pattern of walking to either power walking technique or stride walking technique. We are now going to have a look at stride walking. In normal walking, most of the work is done by the legs and there's very little involvement of the upper body. In stride walking, however, we focus on working the arms, using long swinging actions to propel ourselves forward. And there are two main outcomes. Firstly, our upper body is involved to a much greater extent than normal walking. And secondly, in order to synchronize with the long swinging action of the arms, we automatically start taking longer loping steps. Both of those outcomes result in significantly increased intensity. 
When teaching the stride walking arm action, we break the instruction into four sections as follows. Rolling of the shoulders, lengthening and locking of the arms, swinging from the shoulders and extending the arc. Let's have a look at each of those sections now. Starting with the shoulders, we're going to raise them up, roll them back and relax them down. As well as improving our posture, this has the effect of taking our arms from hanging in front to hanging by our sides where we can swing more effectively. There are three parts to lengthening and locking the arms. Firstly, lengthen your arms by pushing them downward. Secondly, close your fist lightly, squishing with your thumb. And thirdly, turn your wrist forward so that your thumb is pointing down to the ground. This action will lock your arm at the elbow, meaning that your swing will come from your shoulder. So now, with your shoulders rolled up, back and down, your arms lengthened and locked, practice swinging from your shoulder through to your thumb and let your thumb lead the action forward. Now when most of us walk, the swing has a very short arc and happens to the front of our bodies only. In stride walking, we substantially increase the arc of the swing and try to divide it half and half between front and behind the body. So with shoulders rolled up back and down, with arms lengthened and locked, with thumbs leading the way, Start with short swings forward and behind and gradually start extending the arc of the swing half in front, half behind. Because of tight shoulders or years of habit, many of us swing to the front only and we'll need to practice getting those arms behind us. To familiarize yourself with this arm action, we recommend that you take many opportunities to practice from a standing position. Remember the four words, roll, lock, swing, extend. Once you're comfortable with the arm action in a standing position, the next challenge is to practice it while on the move. And for some of us, the problem now becomes getting our arm swing and our leg action to synchronize. Our key advice in this regard is to start and stop often, practicing the technique in short slots. So while walking normally, roll, lengthen and lock your arms, begin with short swings and then begin gradually to increase the arc of your swings. By repeating this process often, eventually you will feel that your legs begin to sink with your arms, taking longer, loping strides. And once you've mastered the technique, you just need to remind yourself that in order to increase intensity to aerobic level, you use your arms to propel yourself forward. Good luck with that.